we have two options for finding the area of the shaded region. Option one, we write this as two separate integrals. Option two, we write it as a single integral. And I wanna go through both options. The reason that we'd have to write this as two separate integrals, if I were to draw in my arbitrary cross section as a vertical rectangle, my cross sections over here have the parabola as their top function and y equals zero as their bottom function. But if I move over here, now my cross sections have, my arbitrary cross sections have a line as their top function and y equals zero as their bottom function. So if we were to write this as little bits of dx sorts of integrals, we'd have to know what this point was to write this as two separate pieces. So on the left-hand side, I'd be looking at the integral from zero to, well, I don't know what this point is yet, so I'm just gonna call it C. I'd be going from zero to C with my top function as x squared and my bottom function as the line y equals zero. In this next part, let me rewrite this equation, give myself a little bit more space. In this other region, I'd be going from C to this point out here. Well, that's the x-intercept of this line, and it looks like that x-intercept should be at 4 thirds. So I'd be going from C to 4 thirds, and now my function would be 4 minus 3x. Technically, minus the y equals 0 again, I'm going to skip writing that piece. Now, I've got to figure out what that C value is, and that's the place where these two curves are intersecting. I think I've written myself nice functions, but sometimes I mess up. Let's try to find that intersection point. I'd have x squared is equal to 4 minus 3x, which means x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0 and I'm going to get x plus 4 times x minus 1, or negative 4, positive 1. That x equals negative 4, that's the intersection that's actually off of my picture over here, if these two kept going. x equals 1, that's got to be this c value I was looking for in the middle. Option one for finding the area. I'm gonna reset now and think about instead of having vertical cross sections, I'm gonna come in here and make horizontal cross sections. The advantage of Finding this area with horizontal cross sections. Honestly, for this particular problem, it's pretty minimal. Um, the only thing that it gains us is that we're writing a single integral instead of two separate integrals. But it is important that we're able to write these arbitrary cross sections either as horizontal rectangles or vertical ones, because that's going to play a role when we start finding volumes. So it's good to practice it now. If I'm doing this as a horizontal cross section, now the height of that cross section is a little bit of dy instead of a little bit of dx. And finding the width of this means finding the two x values at either extreme. If I want to know the x value over here, well, that's coming from the curve y equals x squared, but if I rearrange that, that says x is equal to the square root of y. Finding the x value on the right-hand side of our curve, this equation says y equals 4 minus 3x, but if I rearrange that for x, can I do it in my head? Let's see. I'd add the 3x over, I'd subtract the y, and then divide by 3.
So that would be my function on the right hand side. And that got a little bit messy. That would be my function on the right hand side. And x equals square root of y would be my function on the left. Writing this as a single integral, I'd have my right hand side, 4 minus y over 3 minus my left hand side, square root of y, dy. Because I'm integrating this dy, the other piece that we have to switch are the limits of integration. In the original function, that 0 and x, they go with the dx part. So that's x equals 0 to x equals 1, x equals 0 to x equals 4 thirds. Down here, I need the y values that correspond with our limits. This would come down as far as y equals 0, and my cross sections would go up as far as, well, unfortunately, I chose a problem where these y bounds are the same, but this is going y equals 0 to y equals 1 because we found this intersection point at x equals 1. And if we plug 1 into our original function, 1 squared is still 1. Or if we plugged it in over here, 4 minus 3 is also 1. So this happens to be at a height of y equals 1.